Uh, speaking of companies that are running a business, I've got my headliner because I was trying Let's to dig it. through, uh, dig through um, some stories here, and I kept coming back to um, what the hell's going on with Square Enix. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some recent stories out at you, and uh, looking for some reactions here. And I'm also gonna dig in a little bit because. Come in. As I tried to initially react to these stories, I wanted to make sure that I kind of knew where Square Enix stood uh, in the larger picture. Uh, because the most recent okay. most recent thing that stung with Square Enix uh, was the announcement that they're trying to sell IO Interactive. And they've basically released them. Oh. I'm trying to find a suitor for them. There's a lot of confusion around, like... Are they just selling the studio? Are they also selling Hitman? You know, would they sell the studio and Square Enix would keep Hitman and make another Hitman game, which sounded really shitty. It sounds like they're just they're trying mm-hmm. to figure they're trying to figure out the best fit because IO started work on season two of Hitman. Square is open and I think they want to try to find a deal where they sell Hitman and IO to whoever the buyer is, but I think they're also willing to split it up. But it sounded like they were just basically saying, you know, um, they're open to uh, the best fit here, whatever is most beneficial for Square Enix, more than likely. So that's been the the, the kind of the recent story that is a bummer because uh, Hit, Hitman was not the financial success that Square Enix wanted, which you know reminded me of their Tomb Raider stories of it not selling the millions of copies it wanted, even though it sold millions of copies. Um, and then. More recently, uh, they announced that Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Final Fantasy 7 remake will be out in the next three years. So there's still a lot of time <laughs> left on those. And then um, wow. that was shortly followed up by the fact that they've announced that they're no longer outsourcing development of Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy 7 remake. They're bringing it back in-house. Yeah, that's a lot. So they got concerns there. And that was the big thing that stood out to me. I was like, oh, so... You're kind of reinvesting in this project and probably going to go over budget with it at the same time you're cutting this other thing. So they, I started to draw connections. Other people have made these connections too of like, you know, s- selling this company to make, to bring in money to then spend more time on these two games. Um, uh, on the positive side though, I also saw that they are still investing in their smaller RPGs. Uh, I Am Setsuna came out last year. Uh, they've got an in-house studio called uh, Tokyo RPG Factory, and they've they've announced that they've got another uh, similarly uh, similar styled game called Lost Sphere that'll be coming out in the next year. So, I d- on that side, I do like what Square Enix is doing, but it's just like the choices they're making and where they're choosing to where they're choosing to invest their money is kind of baffling, um, because you've got some things uh, kind of working against each other when you look at Square Enix's history and the Japanese development side of things uh, and, and their traditional RPGs and their major franchises and that combined with, you know, what IO was doing and what they're, when they bought IDOS, which, you know, kind of brought over Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Just Cause, that side of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's just, I don't ever see how these things, I don't see how these things come together sometimes and like sacrificing Hitman for the sake of getting a Final Fantasy VII remake, which I heard somebody kind of react to, and that, oh yeah, maybe now somebody's realizing why they hadn't done this before, because it's an expensive proposition, and it's going to take a lot of time, because you got to get it right if you're going to do it. And I think that was the thing that stood out to me, was just like, man, sacrificing Hitman for more Final Fantasy VII. And um, I didn't li- I didn't like how that felt. But uh, uh, what do you, what, what's your initial thoughts here, hearing these combinations of stories? Well, I think the thing that you have to keep in mind, and we talked about this when we talked about IO getting getting released, um, is that even though critically and definitely among our site, the the Hitman episodic uh, game was well received, it did not sell very well. Sure, it made substantially less money than Absolution did, even though it was substantially a better game than Absolution mm-hmm. was. Um, which is which is really unfortunate because it really is a fun game and it's really great, um, but I think I think Square Enix is just looking at this, you know, as a numbers thing. They make yeah. so much money off the Final Fantasy franchise right now, um, you know, and and that's spread across a couple of different games and and different 
initiatives that they have going on with that. Um, you know that a Final Fantasy VII remake, if done properly, will be hugely successful. It could blow up in their face. That's entirely possible. But I think them moving it in-house and them taking control of it is them saying, we can't afford to have this blow up in our faces, so sure. we're going to make sure that it's actually done right. Um which I'm happy to hear of because, man, I really, really like that game. And so, um, you know, I'd love to I'd love to see a great remake of that game. Um, like, if you just made Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy XV's engine, like, that would be awesome. Sure. I'd love that. So, it's tough because I've always felt like Square Enix is kind of cagey. Like, mm-hmm. like they've always just kind of done things in a way... Um, it's not even Nintendo. Like sometimes it feels like they're almost like vindictive sometimes with their decisions that they make. And like, like they're hostile sometimes to their fans. And you know, it's, it's just, it's a weird relationship. Like they've made like milestone games that I've played in my life, you know, under, under the different banners. But, um, so I have like a very like tight relationship with that company because like a lot of games that I hold up as the best RPGs I've ever played or made under their umbrella, but like at the same time, I'm just like, it's hard to trust them. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how you work. Yeah, it's just uh, looking at some of these things, and yes, the Final Fantasy franchise makes them a lot of money, but they also spend a lot of money developing it, and like, sure, uh, and make some bad decisions along the way that you know, sacrificing some of these other, you know, these other things that I enjoy as a fan. It's just frustrating to see yeah. because you know. If Hitman was uh, wasn't a success, and uh, I you know I've seen the numbers, and yeah, there, there's definitely a case there, but it's just like okay, you know how well did Deus Ex do last year, and how well did Just Cause do before that, and I know Tomb Raider was in their sights. It's kind of like so, how far are we off of these games kind of uh, being killed off? Like what's what's next? And at the same time, I feel like um, those those franchises actually kind of kept Square Enix uh, a little bit afloat in the Final Fantasy 13 years when they were just burning through money there. Like I'm, I'm assuming that money that game ended up making money in the end by uh, you know having basically three releases in the same engine and reusing those assets to make more games. Um, and the decisions that came into play there, but like it really felt like for a while that IDOS was carrying Square Enix before. I feel like you got in some good Dragon Warrior releases. Final Fantasy 15 did really well. Uh, Final Fantasy Mm -hmm. fourteen. Yeah, that's another point. Final Fantasy fourteen was a mess at launch. It was god awful. It was critically hated, and you had these other games that the like the IDOS uh, developed games that were kind of keeping them positive and uh, afloat while they reorganized around fourteen. But it's just kind of like, um, you know, do we need the amount like like you said? we'd be okay with Final Fantasy 7 just in the 15 engine versus whatever they're going to pour into this to try to make it something <laughs> right. huge that I'm curious how that will actually actually do. Um, but I just don't want to see, you know, maybe I want my cake to eat it, and eat it, and to eat it too because I, I want both of Square Enix because the IDOS stuff has been super interesting and then you've got things like Nier Automata like, and what if you Oof. throw throw some actual money behind that and do more joints with Platinum and, and more with that creative team versus just mm-hmm. making more and more of, you know, they're also doing a Final Fantasy twelve remake. Like, they're, they're remastering that for modern consoles. And it's just, like, some of their... Where they choose to spend their resources and, like, it almost seems like some of these other games are just funding more Final Fantasy and more, more Dragon Quest type stuff versus them really believing in these these other franchises and investing in them and um it like i said it's hard to trust them that they're not going to kill something that I actually like like tomb raider and and just cause and and you know deus ex and even you know life is strange too did get a life is strange got a, a sequel announcement recently as well but um they're just a very very curious company i, I yeah i, I think go ahead Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, was like, I like that you called out that they they almost kind of come across as hostile to their fans, and I think that's the. I I don't think they intend it that way. I think that's just a different side of you know what we call when we call out Nintendo for 
um, how they communicate, but and it's just a difference in, in how Japanese companies do business compared to what we're used to here in the West. Uh, but it does come across as much more hostile and, um, and to see good creative ideas and great games kind of be sacrificed for, you know, more sequels and more of the same of, you know, franchises that we do hold near and dear. Like there's, there's, I just think there's gotta be another way with, uh, the, the franchises that they control. Yeah. So I, I just did some quick, quick look up of some numbers cause I was really curious. Okay. Um, so, uh, mankind divided sold around 600,000 copies, um, really? globally, which is really, really bad. That might be. So a, that's not good. Is uh, that less than Hitman? Because Hitman's around the 600K range, too. And I think Hitman got up to eight. I think. So I think Hitman actually did better. So and Deus Ex Deus probably costs more money. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah, Deus Ex is in trouble. Just Cause 3 did a million globally. Okay. How Just Cause uh, 2 These are do? all according to VG charts. Okay. Uh, I didn't look up that one, but. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 did 4.63 million uh, globally. So, and then uh, Nier did, well, it's still early, but. Uh, How was that doing? Globally, they're at 630. Okay. I thought they hit the million mark, though. I thought I, thought I, I just saw too. recently they hit a million units. If they patch the game, so, then. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> has nothing to do so with So unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Actually, no, I take it back. Ooh, that might change my numbers. That was, Deus Ex was for PlayStation 4 only. Oh, so okay, okay. It that did seem, because it came out. Because I remember, platforms. I remember, I want to say original Tomb Raider, or the remake, was that wasn't, so Rise of the Tomb Raider was the second one. Tomb, original Tomb Raider remake sold like 4 million, but they wanted like, Six to ten million. <laughs> yeah, they wanted so it was a disappointment. Ridiculous. And I'm sure so Deus Ex has to be similar. Globally, in- it was about a million for Deus Ex. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. I. I'm. I'm. I. I'm with you. Like. I think the thing for me with Square Enix is that I wish they were willing to. Like they're making all of this money from these big huge tentpole titles I, mean, I takes... wish that they would put more support behind the lower stuff mm-hmm. and like being willing to like take risks on that stuff then then what it feels like they're willing to do because it's like when you send that message of you know like when you say for a reboot of tomb raider which had no business doing well at all <laughs> and was phenomenal like was uh-huh. just such a fantastic game you know, when you say, well, we, we wish it would have done better. Like, we wish it would have <laughs> sold. Like, they, so globally, they did 6.6 6 million in sales. We wish they did 10. Right. It's like, what the hell, guys? Like, come on. Like, that's an amazing achievement. Like, like, p- can you just gush about that a little bit so that we can all feel like you like video games and that this isn't just, like, the side hustle that you're doing and that you really <laughs> care about something else? Like, yeah. I just don't. I don't understand them sometimes. And convince me that you're not the next. I wish that they would have said. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. uh, Yeah. It's just more of. I. I don't know why I keep eyeing some of these Japanese companies. Like, which one's the next one to kind of fall? Because you know, maybe it's as the owner of (laughs) HorribleNight.com, a (laughs) based in my (laughs) love of Castlevania, not knowing the future of that franchise, and not. And what has happened with Konami? It's just like, um, I just feel like eventually all the other games are going to die out. We're just going to get Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest games until those don't work anymore. When they realize that that wasn't the problem. Yeah. Like, uh, I think you're right. I just wish they would invest more in and take more risk on smaller games. Like, because I look at Deus Ex and it's just like that. Also, doesn't have to be to the scale you're making it. Like, I thought they were onto something with Hitman and doing episodic and and kind of piece piecemealing it out a little bit and hoping. That somehow makes it and a which you more could profitable totally model. apply. You could apply that model to Deus Ex. Yeah, like you could do like here, like what these episodic couple, adventure things that we're going to do in that world. Why don't you do a couple like B level investments in Deus Ex rather than triple A or nothing? Like that's what I felt like with yeah. with with Deus Ex and even Tomb Raider. Of like, no, we've got to get we're going to put this much money in and we got to get this much returns. Like we'll split that up over a couple different ways to approach that that genre and figure out where that can take off because I think that model is also going, going away for uh, all of their games. So um, 
anyway, I just been thinking a lot about the future of that company. And just like when I saw like, man, three more years before you like how many projects are going to be sacrificed for kingdom hearts and final fantasy seven, uh, along the way. You know, and what it reminds me of what it reminds me of Google. Yeah. Like it reminds me of Google and like Google reader, which everybody I felt like universally loved. And they're like, yeah, we're moving on to other things. It's dead. <laughs> it's just like, Damn. Okay. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. I like, I like we, that. We thing. never, we never meant to do that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't mean to end that on a bummer. Like I, like we enjoyed Final Fantasy 15. We all had that was that was a fun moment last year uh, when we were all in the middle of that. And it was. We've gotten near Automata this year. That was a big, big like you know, a positive outlook on Japanese development. Um, but man, when I just when I, I, there's something about seeing like oh all we're going to put all this ton of money into sequels and remakes because final fantasy 12 final fantasy 7 kingdom hearts 3 um like what what fresh things do you have coming for me here square enix and are you going to kill them before they <laughs> come out 